And all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And we're going to have a little chat with my friend Terry from London. How are you doing, Terry? You all right, mate? Ah, what are you on with? Great. Great lad, aren't you, Terry? <laughs> great, great geezer is Terry. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing anyway? Are you all right? I'm all right, lad. I'm all right. You're all right, are you, Terry? All right. Yeah? You're all, you're all happy? Uh, you're all settled and everything? Woo, woo! Yeah, so as long as you're all right, Terry, that's all that matters, isn't it? So... Where's my pass the middle of I know, yeah, well, there's not a lot I can do if we can't, uh We can't see... Chris, what Careful there, mate. Uh, edit that out. Solid, solid, like, don't hide it out, mate. Uh, right then, so how are we keeping? Are you alright? Ah, uh, just busy, mate. Are you looking forward to boxing this weekend? Uh, I'm looking forward to the boxing show, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Is that why you're up in Sheffield, Terry? Nah, nah. nah, nah. What, you show your face? Got a couple of keys to pick up, you know what I mean? What door keys is that? Yeah. Let <laughs> me see what like that on here, mate. You're, People get the wrong impression, they'll think that I'm they'll think that I'm bang at it, they'll think I'm trying to impersonate people and get back in get back in my own life. Do you want to budge down here a little bit, mate, since you're in Porky's chair? Porky's lair. Porky's lair. So mate, you're looking some heavy weights here. No, they're hell. just me shadow boxing ones, aren't they? Just to uh yeah. Alright. All yeah. Are you gonna take the old uh nah, you're never. gonna keep that on? Yeah. Well you're gonna to talk to me all the way all the way through an interview with that, that yeah. one. <laughs> you get a bit of that mate, that's the best you're going to get. Could you imagine being an armed robber and having to uh, having to do a job with that one? Eh? It won't be any good, would it? This one's really be fucking you up, Porky. <laughs> I'll tell you just swore, it cost me a quid for my video. <laughs> you owe me a quid. So, <laughs> mate, bleep it out, I'll yeah. do it for you. I'm going to have a little chat with you now and I just want to go through a few things. I haven't even jotted anything down, so this is off top of my head. Who do you think is going to be the fighter of the year, Terry? In your opinion, for the you from the UK, Josh Taylor, easy. Josh Taylor, yeah. Yeah, Josh, jo Josh Taylor's the only guy from this country that's just delivered, right? Yeah, yeah. He just delivers every fight. He's delivered for us, entertaining every fight. So you're going to go for Josh Taylor then, yeah? Okay, and. Um, who do you think is going to be the best trainer of the year? Ooh. Last year it was Chris Medley, obviously. This year, got to give it to Shane, right? Shane McGuigan. Or no, no, actually, ooh, Eddie Lamb. Eddie Lamb. I think Eddie Lamb out of my box has done a lot for Frank this year. Well, if you're going to go on achievements and for what they've done, I'm going to go for Shane McGuigan as my trainer at year. Uh, I'm going to go for. I'm not, and he, he ain't a pal of mine, he's not a pal of mine, I, I like what they stand for, they get a lot of crap on social media, don't they McWiggins, but I like him as well, I think he comes across good, so he's going to be my trainer at year, and so is Josh Taylor, he's my fighter at year. Who would you say is the promoter of the year, and we're, not, we're talking boxing, not events? Steve Goodwin. Steve Goodwin, yeah? Yeah, because I'm called the Goodwin hater, so I may as well, right? Well, I'm going to go for, you've got, you'd have to say Eddie Earn for what he's achieved, but I'm going to throw a curveball. He's I'm got a billion dollars to play with, though, so I well, can't... So he said, well, he's taking his cut, isn't he? Yeah, so I can't give him a medal for that. Well, I'm going to say the best show of the year was Francis Warren's at your court. Which was that? Was that the Shaquan Sh Peters one? Yeah, Shaquan Peters. Shaquan Peters, I couldn't remember his name yesterday. Well, against Spelman. Yeah, that's the that's the best show this year so far. I heard it were rocking the show. Everybody were happy. It were good value. Uh, there were not there were no crap around it and spoke by anybody. Francis just got on with it. And Francis is only a kid. He's he's obviously learnt off his dad. But you'd have to say he's a chip off the old block for putting that show on. Unless his dad's matched it, mm. we're not going to get to know. But I thought he handled everything right, leading up to it, during it and after it. And it looked like everybody had a good time. Mate, hell of a show. I was, you were there, weren't you? Yeah? I was there. Lawrence Shock and block, wasn't it? Every, like, most All the faces down there were yeah. there. Yeah. Everyone was there. 
That's got to be the yardstick for people like Steve Goodwin, Steffi Ball, Dennis Hobson, Steve Crump. Yeah, all them just kind of people, listen, aren't it? Boxing so simple. Yeah, just give us some big names and some meaningful fights, and it's all right. yeah. it's easy. It's not rocket science. Fucking hell. Sorry. No, no, no mate. We're not, we're not getting paid now, so we might as well just go for the old hog. But let's just try and keep it clean because my mate Crusher watches it, and we don't want his mum and dad saying that I'm learning him how to swear. Was that Crusher tried. Kowalski? Crusher, uh, James at Glen, Glen Rose Gym. Forgot his first name, is it Daniel Cutler or some young Cutler name? No, big shout out to Glyn. Like Forgot him. his name, but pardon? Glyn's a good man. Glyn Rose, yeah, we like Glyn Rose, don't we? He's all right. Yeah, hell of a boxer as well in this time. He's super, he'd super have, He'd have done well in these days. He had that Ingle style, didn't he? But they all shot, well, they, they, talk, they nicked off Errol Bomber Graham. No, he had it before Harold. Like he was doing that in the seventies, and Harold only joined Ingle what seventy nine, eighty. No, Errol brought that style over here. No, no, he no, did, no, mate. No, Glyn no, said no. it on channel. Isn't that right? Or oh, fans will tell you. Nah, Glyn's Glyn's wrong. Then I want to tell Glyn Rhodes he's wrong. Nah, he's, he's had that style for a Terry, while. come on, stop trolling. No, nah, stop I, trolling. We're gonna see him tomorrow. We'll have the conversation. Right. Okay. But uh, other than that, who do you think is? The best up-and-coming fighter under 25 years of age Ooh. and under 10 fights. Or around about 10 fights. What do you think? What? In this country or globally? In, in, we're going for the UK. We're not bothered about anybody else. Just the UK. Who do you think is the best up-and-coming fighter that everybody's talking about? We can easily say Daniel Dubois, Dennis McCann, Tommy Frank. We can go through all the lists like that, can't we? Uh, Kyle Youssef, you know, Anthony Tomlinson. You know, the list is endless. Who do you think is a good fighter? He's either around about 10 and 0 and he's around about 25-ish. He might even have to be 26, 27, but he at, he's at that stage where he hasn't won a British title yet. That kind of thing. I know Dubois has, so don't quote me on that, but who's a good prospect coming through who's about 10 and 0? Forget age is the number. We'll just go on. Who's had about 10 fights? Who do you rate? Super casual question there, mate. Super and and you took out Dennis McCann as well. That's that was very cruel of you. So, ah oh man, Jermaine Brown. I don't Jermaine know Jermaine Brown. Brown. Yeah, Jermaine Brown. So he's a super middleweight. He fights in Swindon on. Saturday. Is he a Paddy Fitzpatrick fighter? No, 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 no. He's he's trained by my mate Adam Martin. So, ah. yeah, he's lovely amateur. Good skills. He's turned over to the pros. Stronger. Sitting down on his shots now. Super middleweight. It's it's quite a flat division actually. So he's got a chance to to rise really really quickly. Look out for the for the fight him and Zach Chetty will have eventually because they were at the same boxing club and I think they might have had to fight each other yeah. in the ABA. So there's a there's a real rivalry between those two. Yeah. Right. So who, who do you think is the best cut man then? I'll give you my cut man. Who do you think is the best cut man in this the year? Who's been the best cut man this year in the UK? Because these cut men never get no press, do they? They never get no media. They're not in any interviews. Who do you think is the best cut man in the country at the moment? I'm going to give you a list of who I, th who I think would be on everybody's lips. Uh, Jamie Sheldon, is it Cutman Sheldon? Uh, Kerry Kays, Jimmy Tibbs, Mark Seltzer, uh, Mick the Rub. Williamson, out of them five, who has been the best cut man this year? Steve Broughton. So Steve Broughton used to be shaving with his cuts man, and yeah. he gets the award because he trained Derek to throw in his last fight. So credit to credit to for being able to switch over. Right. Yeah. That threw you off. Yeah, well, obviously, I'm a Jimmy Tibbs fan, so I'm going to say he's the best in the world. But no, wait, 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 I don't wait. think Jimmy's been active enough in fights this year. I don't think he's had a bad cut no. to, to he, deal with. No. So I'm going to say Gary Sheldon. But Kerry Kays, I think, has done well. But you year. don't get Jimmy Tibbs in to do your cuts. Like, that's oh, yeah, I know. But if yeah. he's in your corner, he's usually a second, isn't he? Yeah. Like, if he's with Shane McGuigan, he's a second, or if he's with Mark Tibbs, yeah. he's just, well, he just the cuts as well while yeah. he's there, doesn't he? But, but he's he's not, got experience for it all, hasn't he? Yeah, but he's not a guy that you're paying money for because he's good with cuts. You're paying for his experience. Yeah, you're right? paying for his eyes, basically. Yeah, f yeah. You're paying for him to say, that's not right there, and that's not right there. Because what he's done with fighters over the years is 
He's a legendary trainer, isn't he? He's a good man. He's a, yeah, he's, a like, guy, he's a guy that we should all look up to. We like Jimmy Tibbs. We like I, I love Jimmy Tibbs a lot. Man. I love I'm going to do five shoulder presses for Jimmy Tibbs. <laughs> he can't be serious, can he? Ah, deadly. What do you think of tablets there? Them, uh, well, them steroids. Multi multivitamin tablets. He's, Terry, are you going to be serious? Come on. <laughs> it's an hardcore boxing channel. What are you doing to me? Come on. Come on, take your mask off and stop messing about. I've got to keep this on. Why? Because you know those trolls like to put me up on Twitter. Mm. They're not troll yet. They take will. it off, man. We'll, we'll right. visit them tomorrow, eh, right, to start. Well. Maybe <laughs> we should go visit one of them, eh? What do you think? <laughs> one particular troll who we know where he will uh, be tomorrow, don't we, Terry? Should we pay him a visit? You can hold camera and I'll put it on him, eh? See if he's got what to say, eh? No, nah, we'll flip it around. Eh, hey, what do you think? Mate, it's lucky I have to sort microphone in here. But no, 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 back to the questions. Man. I'm yeah, getting sidetracked. Ah. Who's best trainer in, in, in country? Come on. At the moment, Shane McGuigan, Josh Taylor's fighter of the year. Dillian, Mark Tibbs was not active enough with, uh, uh, I don't think, to win trainer of the year, but... No, he is. No, no, whoa, 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 whoa. No, he is. No, he ain't, I mean, he ain't got a world... Sorry, I'll rephrase that. Mark Tibbs ain't won a world title. Josh Taylor has. Mm. But but Mark, what he's done with Dillian White is fantastic. Mark, we love you. Yeah, but and, and Shane McGuigan's got to be trainer at year. Mark Tibbs will get his chance, won't he? He'll get his chance to be in the mix, well, won't no, he? Well, wait, wait. So, so we've had trainer of the year, but you said who's the best trainer? At the moment, in the country. At the moment, then that's a different Shane question. McGuigan, isn't it? No, 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 no. What, oh, what? sorry then. Who's the trainer at year, Shane McGuigan? But who's the best trainer then at the moment? The well, no, no. Look, Joe Gallagher was once trainer of the year, right? That doesn't oh. mean he's a great trainer. He, yeah, kept lobbying yeah. it. he kept lobbying himself on social media. Right. Every time he did an interview, he were reeling off all his wins. He were like 49 and 0 at one point, wasn't he? Not against world champions. <laughs> but again, against who? I mean, the Smiths have gone 3 and 12 in world title fights. So what's that tell no, you? Look, Paul, I always measure it by if a young fighter comes to me and says, Who should I train with? Who's on the list, right? Mark Tibbs is on the list, Shane's on the list. Yeah, Mark T Tibbs family, you're going to want to work with them because they're proper people, they're not snides, they're men of honour. Any young trainer out there, if you want to work with anybody, we had a chat about something earlier, like similar in a car like this. You've got to work with somebody who's, who's genuine and who's got your best interests at heart. Go to Mark Tibbs, Peacock Jim. And he's also a trainer, is it Loughborough, the trainer there, and he goes away Monday to Friday, he's only up there at Loughborough University. Go there, look what he's done with Dillian White, he's gone 10-0 and 0 with Dillian White, 10-0, no defeats, I think five knockouts. But wait, wait, you see, see, that's not how you want to look at it. He took Dillian, but Dillian was kind of already on the way. But look at the guys he's okay, working yeah, with. Okay, look, yeah. look at the guys he's working with who... Harvey Horney working with now, isn't he? Yeah, guys who weren't on the way. That's how I judge the trainer. We right, take Richie Riaporte. Ah, uh, Richie was kind of on the way already. Like, like Richie oh, was. No, it's, more, it's, more, it's more John Harding Jr. The promise he's made with things with Richie. What Mark's done with John Harding Jr. Exactly. You like John Harding Jr., don't he's, you? Like, he's a friend, so I'm a bit biased. But that's what I mean. That's how you judge the trainer. What do you do with your, your guys that don't have the magic? How do you then give them the magic? Yeah. Hardcore answer for a hardcore audience. Yeah, 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 I suppose, yeah, but Mark Tibbs has got plenty of time on his hands, hasn't he? Plenty of time. <sighs> time? But you still got to be able to do it. Well, we're not saying he, he's in mix, though, isn't he, for best train, one of the best yeah. trainers in country. He's on the Is he a better trainer than Joe Gallagher? I prefer him to Joe Gallagher, who's been the answer to him. Right, okay. Because to say yes or no is a bit weird because Joe's got a lot of silverware. Mark hasn't got as much silverware. But Mark. Yeah, but Joe Gallagher's silverware, there's a question mark around it, isn't there? But, but he's still got it. So, so do you see what I mean? Like, yeah, but there's a question mark around but, Joe Gallagher's. But it's still there. So Mark's got to get to that level of silverware, then we can compare the two. I prefer Tim's fighters to watch. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I prefer their styles and that. They tend to, they, they tend to have that old school sort of style, don't they? And no, just fundamentals. He, yeah, basically. Mark, Mark, Mark's like Shane McGuigan. They cut out mistakes. They don't 
So uh, they, they don't give you anything flashy, they don't give you any magic, they just cut out your mistakes. Mm. So you actually walk into the ring a better fighter because you know you're not going to fall below a certain level. Yeah. And then if the other guy in front of you falls below a certain level, so if you remember the Parker fight, Parker's a far more decorated amateur pro than Dillian White, right? Yeah, yeah, he went, did he go Olympics, Parker? I don't, I don't think so. I think he was like Junior Worlds with Huey Fury and Tony Oka. Mm. But what happened was, Parker just dropped his level. Dillian maintained his level when he got deep into the fight. Then he dropped it. And then you're like, okay, I can see what Mark's doing up in Loughborough. That's why they're in Loughborough. So there were no defects in Dillian's game. You mean so that he won't uh, distracted? Yeah, that as well, but just to be, look, because they're around elite athletes. So you're around your GB sprinters, you're around your golfers, you're around your rugby players. He leaves it all in. in Dillian White, for me, like, I've given him a bit of stick over this B sample and he still needs stick because we need answers. But as regards improvements, he's improved since he fought Joshua, hasn't he? And, he's, and he leaves it all in ring, like, when he fought Parker, right, he left everything in the ring. He didn't get out of the ring thinking he could have done more. He, he went for it full on, like he did with Chisora, and he, he bothered, he were bothered about being tired, but I'll bother with that when it comes to it. Let me just get everything out of my system, and he just went for it, didn't he, in the Chisora fight and the Parker fight. He's a fighter. Dillian's a fighter. He's the guy that, if there were no boxing trainers, if there was no EIS, if there were no steroids, if there were no any, if there was nothing apart from human beings, if this, if this was the caveman days, Dillian would be like our warrior king. Yeah. Because he's just a guy that he's a he's a fight, and, and you, you can't you can't manufacture that. I don't know if we're going to get onto this when we talk about Joshua, but you can't manufacture warriors. Like it's either in you or it's not. Yeah. And it's Jesus is in Dillian. It really is. Mm. You know, I go back to the days when he used to spar my mate Dominic, and this is when this is two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when Dillian wasn't really on anyone's radar. Yeah. Right, mate. No, go on, I'm just checking time, that's all. Go on, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, want, to, I don't want us to miss anything, yeah, go on. Okay, no, I was just going to say, so, <laughs> Dom, Dom, Dom's a guy that used to put hands on Ian Lewis and slap him silly, all this sort of stuff. I remember when he, he would, he'd outskill Dillian, but Dillian would keep coming. You watch him, these shots, and you're like, oh, these are heavy punches he's taking. Never gave up. And you, you ended up thinking, if he could just tie it all together as a boxer, he hasn't got to worry about heart. He hasn't got to worry about character. He hasn't got to worry about anything else other than can you do the fundamentals? Mm. Yeah. So basically, Dillian White, if he's that good, and we do rate him as a fighter, why has he not fought for a European title yet? He's not gone by a British level yet, has he? That, that, does he need to? I mean, look, the, the, for me, the Parker win, is he's worth ten million pound net, apparently, Dillian White at the moment. He's not fought for a European title. He's got to be the richest fighter in the UK that's never fought for a world title, isn't he? But he doesn't need to, he's bypassed that. He's he look a bit like Robin Reed. Went straight for a world title. Uh Robin Robin took a different journey. Do you think they just risked it everything with Robin that night and took a punt with him in Italy? But he already had the goods, right? Robin was 92 world, Olympian. World bronze, uh, world silver. No, world gold and an Olympic bronze. Well, yeah, bronze, so, yeah, so that's, it's not really a gamble with someone that good. With Dillian it is, because you're like, we're taking someone who essentially... No, I'm a, a kickboxer. Yeah, 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 you were a kickboxer. Yeah, when he was a world champion kickboxer, though, you're a champion. But everyone's a world champion kickboxer. Oh, are they? Yeah, two fights and you're a world champion. Uh. So it's one of those where there's so many, you think we think it's bad for boxing, there's so many federations for kickboxing that, you know, you, um, look, you're probably a kickboxing world champion, you don't even know it yet. If I want to do that, maybe me and Spencer could fight for a vacant uh, Spencer, maybe we could do a kickboxing. He's got longer legs than me, so careful. Is he tall, Spencer? Yeah, he's six So I'm going to have to do a John Ryder then, aren't I? You have to do a Hail Mary, mate. <laughs> No, um... So, basically, Dillian White, is he going to win a world title? Is he good enough or, or will it be about manoeuvring him? Does he beat Fury? No. Does he beat AJ in a rematch? 60-40 in his favour. I think he's a favourite against AJ. Uh, he's improved more than AJ has and there were not much in it the first time they fought, were they? But he's got that top level confidence now. Remember, yeah. that, if you remember, they rushed him into the Joshua fight. They did, yeah. Remember, remember, they wanted to get him then, didn't they? Came off his band, mate, you've got two fights and you're fighting Joshua. 
or the fight's not happening. That's what happened. And I remember yeah. at the time, we everyone knew this is a setup. But now look at what Dillian's done. He's gone away and he's grafted. He's done he's done the hard rounds, right? We've seen him come from behind. We've seen him knock people out clean. He's done what Joshua can't do. Right? He's knocked people out where they can't answer the 10 count. So now if you're Joshua, you're looking at Dillian going, I don't know if I fancy that fight. Yeah. Because Joshua's he's a sucker for a left hook, isn't he? Yeah, he is, he is a sucker for a left hook. So, so Dillian White, does he beat Fury? No. Does he beat AJ? Yes. I'm going to say yeah. Does he beat Wilder? No. no is he there to be hit against no, Wilder? No, no one beats Wilder. Well, I'm going to say, Mark, I don't think Dillian beats Wilder. I just think he's a freak of nature. I don't think Dillian would have the style to beat him. I think what Dillian do he try and fight fire with fire. I don't think he'd get iced, do you? So all this about Wilder ducking Dillian White. I don't, I don't believe Wilder's ducked anyone because if you look at his run over the last couple of years, who's he really ducked? He's iced everybody he's fought, hasn't he? Apart from Fury. Well, well he's definitely he's, he's put everyone on the canvas. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. So, yeah. And, and we still, let's be honest, we still don't know what this took out of Fury. Yeah, I mean, the Otto Wallin fight, Maybe the camps have caught up with him, he's had a lot of training. Tyson, hasn't it? I didn't think he was bad in that Otto Wilder fight. I think the cut made it a bigger story than it was. I thought he pretty much pitched a shutout against it. Mechanical southpaw, you know. If he had, look, if Fury had turned southpaw in that fight, I think it would have been far easier for him. But yeah. he chose not to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does he be Andy Ruiz, Dillian White? You have to ask me that after December eighth, because we still we still don't know how good Ruiz is. He's got to he's got to cement his position at the top table by beating yeah. Joshua again. Yeah, yeah. Because we've still got that kind of Parker thing where it's like, well, you weren't really dominant against Parker. You were good, but you weren't dominant. Yeah. And then you beat the shit out of Anthony Joshua. Yeah. But can you do that again? Yeah. And if you do that again, then okay, we're gonna put you on that top table. Right, so who's the top heavyweight in the world? De uh, Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's number one. Who's number two? Uh, it might still be you, I'm not sure. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, for me, it goes Wilder, Fury, Dillian. Right, and, and then Ruiz fourth. Ooh, him and Joshua, neck and neck. Well, I'm going to go Wilder, Tyson Fury, Andy Ruiz, Joshua Dillian. I'm gonna go. But each one of them on any given day can beat the other kind of that's why it's exciting, isn't it? I just think Wilder beats everyone. Yeah. 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 Good uh, look, it's it's gonna land, right? That right hand is going to land. If Fury gets dropped twice, he's landed twice. Had, look, had he been knocked down like that in the sixth round, do you think the fight would have gone the distance? No, I don't know. But yeah. Fury got up like a, he got up and then he dealt with him, didn't he, in the rest of the round. But Wilder was tired, wasn't he? But also just experience. Fury's been down so many, I don't want to say disrespectfully, but Fury's been down so many times in his career. Six times, five, six times, been down several times, hasn't he? Uh, as, as a pro, who's dropped him? I know Cunningham dropped him. Padgett, Padgett Cunningham, Ruiz twice. Padgett Cunningham, Ruiz twice, and there's another one, isn't there? Which Ruiz dropped Fury? Sorry, not Ruiz, sorry. Uh, Cunningham, Wilder twice, sorry. Yeah. Wilder twice, Padraig, Cunningham, Wilder twice, Padraig, Cunningham. There's another one, isn't there? There's five all together, I think, isn't there? Oh, man. I can't even remember the fifth one, then. But either way, he's never been not, he's never been stopped, has he, Tyson? No, so but, he knows what he's on, right? The thing is, people don't realise this. Getting knocked down is about experience. I remember having this conversation with David Hay. When he first got dropped, it was against Jim Twight in the ABAs. Because he'd never been dropped before, he didn't know how to react. Yeah. And so the ref could see that fight gets stopped. But after that, whenever he got dropped, he knew what to do. So him and Adam Booth would actually train, where they'd have David Hay make himself silly, uh, dizzy, and then he'd, he'd spar. Yeah. Just so he knew how to, how to collect his thoughts and how to cope. So I think Fury's been through that so many times that he knows how to get back up. Which was impressive. You have to give him his due for doing that, because not yeah. many have. No. So yeah, I, but 
the interesting thing about the heavyweights is I think this is probably the last era of the the super the super freaks, the giants. I think we're gonna go back to smaller heavyweights, about six three, six four, dominating in the heavyweight division after these guys are done. Right. Okay. Right. Uh do you wanna do a <laughs> You look a lot without box break, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get on the computer, aren't I? I'm, I'm deliberately blocked. Uh, hang on a second, let's have a look. Maybe. Right then, so we'll, we'll finish this, this first part one thing on this. Joe Gallagher is not a better trainer than Mark Tibbs, he never will be while he's got an hole in his arsehole. Uh, number two, this is my opinion, uh, Shane McGuigan is the trainer of the year, Josh Taylor's fighter of the year, uh, Cut man at year, uh, I'm going to say Kerry Kays. Kerry Kays. Uh, for which cut? I don't think Jimmy Tibbs is a cut man, no, he's a trainer, no, no, isn't it? For, for, Can't for, say Jimmy Tibbs. For which cut, which cut are you awarding Kerry Kays for? The Yui Fury one against Povetkin. Did he get cut against Pulev as well? Mick the rub against Callum Smith. Yeah, he got cut against Pulev as well, yeah. Ooh. Make the rub against Callum Smith. Who oh, was the bad cut? That was a Fury one, wasn't it? But he was a, a, a guy from abroad, wasn't he? A foreigner. So we can't count him. But all them top guys, Jimmy Who's Tibbs was a great cut man, but he, hasn't had a, he, hasn't, he hasn't had a bad cut to deal with this year, Jimmy, has he? No. You have him in your corner though, you feel safe that he's a cut man and he's there to th if, if, you, if you sort of have a bad night. It's like a bit of insurance having him in your corner. He's isn't seen it? everything. Yeah, he's seen everything. So, but I don't think he's had a bad cut. I think Mick Williams has had worst cut a year, hasn't he? Fury's one were a foreign guy, wasn't it? So we can't count that. What other bad but, but, cuts? No, 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 but that was really good corner work, because bloody hell. He, Fury's one should have been stopped, shouldn't it, really? They'd have stopped that in England, wouldn't they? I don't think it should have been stopped, because he can still fight. So, we'll And, and, and that lineal title is very important. Yeah, yeah. It's right. probably the most important title in the heavyweights right now. 